Remember when you first started your craft and it was so exciting and it's all you wanted to do and all you wanted to think about? At least that's how it was for me and that is how it is for Linda. Linda started weaving not quite two years ago and she has thrown herself in full force. Her studio is spectacular and I can't wait for you to see it. Let's go. Well, I'm Linda Riley. I live in Whitby, Ontario and uh, I'm a very, very new weaver. I've been weaving since November of 2020 and this is my space. So um, I guess we'll start here, which is also where the weaving process begins with the warping. This is my, my husband made me this warping frame. Um, I wanted something really good and sturdy that I could load lots and lots of boats on. My husband also made me this little table from an, an oak table that we had. He cut it in half and he mounted it on the wall here so that I had, um, you know, enough space for the accoutrements of warping, the scissors and, you know, ties and stuff that you need when you warp. And here is my rigid heddle loom. This is the one that I started with, but it didn't take long before I wanted to get into something a little bit more involved than weaving on the rigid heddle. So, and here I just have some yarn laid out that will be in the order that I plan to weave it on there. Nothing interesting going on in the cupboards or in the drawers here. This is where I am just storing things that I've woven. Um, yeah, just handy little drawers there. And I have another whole box of things that I've woven in the other room. I'm running out of places to keep it all. More yarn for the rigid heddle, a little bit for the, the bigger loom. And, the, you know, my all my tools, which I can move to be a little bit closer to me when I need them. Obviously, my big loom, uh, my just my biggest toy that I've ever owned. So after, uh, I guess, three or four months of weaving, um, on the rigid heddle. Actually, it was a girlfriend who got me started and she was every bit as obsessed as I was and she said she was off to buy herself a jack loom and she persuaded me that I also needed to have a jack loom. So I ended up buying the very same loom that she had and uh, here it is. I've been at it ever since. And, you know, more yarn there. My little tiny weaving library. <laughs> I'm gradually accumulating some books, but I actually get more from the internet. I, you know, it's books are great, but I really find other people's videos are so helpful because I, I need to see a process to, to really understand it. It's harder to get something from reading it. Um, this is my sewing table. So when I have a run of tea towels that need hemming, that's done here. I have a little sewing machine there. And it's also my table where I keep my steam press, which I just recently bought, um, you know, to put a, a hard press on scarves and shawls and stuff. And yeah, a little bit more storage there. Um, I have no windows, but my father um, is a painter and I have his beautiful painting over here and it makes me feel like I'm looking outside. So that's how I bring some light and life into this otherwise very dark studio. And that's it, that's the whole tour. You touched a little bit on a friend encouraged you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how you decided that you really wanted to weave? Yeah, so she, we, she's a friend from high school and we don't see each other in person, but we're friends um, online because she lives in Calgary. And one day she texted me and she said, have you ever heard of a rigid heddle loom? And we were both knitters. So she knew that, you know, fiber arts would be interesting. Um, and I never had heard of one. So she said that she was going to buy a rigid heddle loom and um, she bought one in it and she made a beautiful scarf, like her first project, it turned out so well. So I said, oh, that would be really fun to do. So it was November, 2020. And, you know, we were all sitting at home <laughs> with nothing to do. So I went and bought my rigid heddle loom. And my first project was, it was a bit of a disaster as most people's first projects tend to be, but I was sufficiently encouraged, um, you know, to keep going and keep working on it. And then, um, I don't know, I made, I, I got right into it very quickly. I was weaving all day, every day. I had done, I don't even know how many scarves, couple of tea towels. And then my friend Regina started making noises about buying a bigger loom. So, you know, and then I followed along. <laughs> yeah. So did you look at a lot of different looms or you just 
were like, no, this is what my friend's you know, getting. Yeah, that was it. I mean, she had done the research, and I thought, I don't really need to go out and do a bunch of research. If it's working for her, it'll work for me. So I just went ahead and bought the exact same room that she has. And you didn't look for secondhand? You just got a brand there, new room? There were no, at the time, there were no secondhand eight shaft looms to be had. And I knew I definitely wanted an eight shaft loom because I, I recognized how quickly I had grown tired of the rigid heddle loom. And I thought, if I get a four shaft loom before very long, I'm gonna want an eight shaft loom. So the, like I said, there was nothing on the used market and I thought, no, I'll just go and get a brand new one. So I noticed that what's on your loom right now is a really interesting project. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. Do you Thank wanna you. talk a little bit about that? It's my version of a chorus effect. I don't know whether I have nailed the actual um, uh, technique of producing a chorus effect, but I, I did a little bit of reading and I tried to figure it out. And um, and I found, you know, that like a very common draft for an undulating twill and, uh, you know, tried to work that out to produce this chorus effect. I don't know if Marg Co would approve, but... <laughs> I think Marg Co would approve of you leaving for sure. <laughs> I, should, I definitely want to do her course at some point, but... You know, as with everything weaving, you spend a heck of a lot of money to ramp up with this. Yeah. Marg's course, which I definitely want to do some way, someday, uh, had to take a back seat for now. <laughs> yeah. Do you have favorite color combinations that you like to go to? Um, no, I really don't. Pretty much just I'll spend hours putting spools of thread together and, and trying to figure out, you know, what works and what doesn't work. But I'm really drawn to very bright colors, very bold. Um, my favorite shawl that I wove was like this big rainbow uh, thing. So yeah, just any colors that work well are my favorite colors. Yeah. yeah. Do you have that rainbow shawl? I wish I did. As Even as I was mentioning it, I thought I shouldn't mention that shawl because it's sold. Oh, well, that's <laughs> yeah, good news. Yeah, I sold it to a woman in the U.S., but it's actually on my Instagram page. So. Oh, fun. Yeah. So how do you sell your products? Just uh, word of mouth. I um, I looked into Etsy. I keep reading negative things about it. Um, I haven't had really the inclination to sit down and figure out, you know, Shopify or Squarespace or anything like that. So, so far it's been word of mouth. I haven't sold a ton, but... Um, you know, just a couple of items here and there. It's, at some point, I will get myself organized to sell properly. Yeah. Do you have a favorite, a, another favorite piece that you have here? Is there? Um, well, probably that shawl over there. Um, that's my favorite piece so far. Oh, it's it's uh, just a block twill. And there's um, a website called Biscuits and Jam where you can choose some colors and create a striping pattern. Um, so I, you know, plugged my colors in, created a striping pattern using all Fibonacci numbers and um, and then I played with color and weave you know so some of these stripes actually have two colors in them so we were just saying how um, we get asked a lot how long did that take you how do you answer that question that depends <laughs> the answer is always that depends uh, I don't know three or four hours to warp um, another three or four hours to thread, longer if it's, you know, a wide shawl like that. I think weaving an actual scarf, it's probably eight to 10 hours total weaving time. And then it would be a couple of hours of fringe twisting. Um, and then of course the wet finishing. Uh, the only thing that I've really managed to cut down the time is the pressing with my, you know, steam press versus the iron that used to take felt like 10 years of ironing. Well, I'm really impressed with your beautiful little studio. Thank it's you. not big, but it's perfectly functional. It's it's great for, a, you know, just a hobby weaver. I'm just sitting down here doing my thing and I'm cozy and comfortable and everything is at hand. So and I like it a lot. You had mentioned before that you're down here every single day. Every single day. I, um, my husband and I get up every morning and have coffee and breakfast together and he's a golfer, so I'm a golf widow. <laughs> <laughs> but it frees me up to come down here and, and weave to my heart's content. So every single day I'm down here, I love it. You talked about knitting, mm -hmm. but do you have other uh, fiber art hobbies? Not fiber arts, only, only the knitting. Um, I did used to be a card maker. I did that for about 15 years, paper crafting. Um, and, uh, and I do a little bit of coloring, you know, with pencils. 
I'm not great, so <laughs> I'm not going to show you any of that. But yeah, yeah. I, you know, aside from that, um, I play the piano. I enjoy spending time with my grandchildren and my family, and yeah, that's about it. All right. Do you have any advice for anybody who's thinking about starting to weave? <laughs> oh boy, clear off your calendar because uh, it's a lot of hours spent in learning and practicing. Um, again, like I said, you know, I was very fortunate that I started my weaving journey in the middle of the pandemic, so I had many, many hours to spare. But yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be very time consuming. It's a very, very large learning curve, but incredibly rewarding. Um, and I absolutely would encourage people to start weaving. It's, it's been the best hobby I've ever had. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you liked it, you might also like this one or this one. I'll meet you there. Bye for now.